Stories and Documentary Network. Welcome to a land where the past and present coalesce, a civilization steeped in antiquity yet dynamically shaping the future. China, a country of remarkable contrasts, where time-honored traditions intertwine with a burgeoning modernity. Our journey through time begins amidst the winds of ancient dynasties, where tales of emperors, sages, and monumental achievements unfold. From the birth of civilization to the rise and fall of majestic empires, we will traverse through the rich tapestry of ancient China, uncovering the intricacies of its culture, innovations, and legacies that endure to this day. Throughout this documentary, we will explore pivotal epics, starting with the dawn of civilization along the fertile banks of the Yellow River and the Yangtze River. We'll unravel the mysteries of the Xia Dynasty, delve into the oracle bones of the Shang Dynasty, and understand the philosophical underpinnings of the Zhou Dynasty. From the unification under the Qin Dynasty to the golden eras of Tang and Song, we'll journey through the Ming and Qing Dynasties, witnessing their triumphs, cultural magnificence, and their eventual decline. This narrative encompasses the breadth of ancient China's triumphs and adversities. We'll uncover the technological innovations that shaped the world, the philosophical wisdom that continues to inspire, and the imperial splendor that still echoes through the halls of history. From the Silk Road to the Great Wall, from Confucian ethics to the art of war, we'll unveil the multifaceted facets that define ancient China's profound legacy. The cradle of ancient China lay nestled between two great rivers, the Yellow River, known as the Mother River, and the Yangtze River. These vital waterways bestowed the gift of life upon early settlers, nurturing the growth of one of the world's most ancient civilizations. Human beings set foot on the Chinese subcontinent more than a million years ago. Evidence indicates the presence there of an archaic member of the human lineage known as Homo erectus, a term meaning upright man. One example is the well-known Peking man, a subspecies of Homo erectus identified by fossil remains found in northern China in 1929. The species Homo sapiens, meaning, wise man, and including all modern humans, appeared later, around 100,000 years ago. These communities of hunter-gatherers followed the mammoth, elk, and moose on which they subsisted into northern China. Later they learned to fish along China's many rivers and long coastlines and supplemented their food stores by foraging from a rich variety of plants, including many grasses, beans, yams, and roots. Archaeological evidence from this stage of China's prehistory, the Paleolithic period from roughly 100,000 to 10,000 before the Common Era, confirms that these groups developed symbolic language, which enabled them to evolve ideas about abstractions like kinship and an afterlife and thus produce the foundations for a shared culture and society. Their tools, such as those used for grinding plants, were simple and fashioned primarily of stone, but also of bone and wood. Early humans arrived in China from Africa and Western Asia in waves separated by hundreds of years, but they were far from uniform. Thus, they eventually produced early societies that spoke a variety of languages, differed in their spiritual beliefs, and developed the capacity for agriculture independently of one another. China's diverse geography, climate, and terrain reinforced regional variations in these early cultures as well. The country today stretches for roughly a thousand miles from north to south and east to west, occupying a temperate zone dominated by two major river systems, the Yellow and the Yangtze. Mountains, Deserts, grasslands, high plateaus, jungles, and a variety of climates exist, such as the frozen environs surrounding the city of Harbin in the north and the subtropical climate around Hong Kong in the south. Most of the early cultures and later dynasties that produced Chinese civilization lay in a much smaller area, within a series of provinces along the Yellow and Yangtze rivers, ringed by the outer areas of Manchuria, Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Tibet. Today these provinces make up the most densely populated areas of the People's Republic of China, inhabited almost entirely by the majority ethnic group in China, Han Chinese. The outlying areas have been the traditional homelands of a great many religious and ethnic minorities, such as Mongolians, Tibetans, Uyghurs, and Manchu, who did not become incorporated into the first dynasties of ancient China. Early inhabitants of China found that each region offered advantages and challenges to meeting the necessities of daily life, food, shelter, and security. More than 20 sites that produced unique Neolithic cultures have been found in China. 
The earliest such culture was the Nanjiang II, 8500 to 7700 before the Common Era, in Hebei, a province in the northeast, and the last known was the Yuxi culture, 1900 to 1500 before the Common Era, found in Shandong, an eastern coastal province. All were capable of farming, domesticating animals, and manufacturing textiles and ceramics. During the Neolithic period, these early Chinese settlements witnessed a pivotal shift in human history. Communities began to transition from nomadic lifestyles to settled agricultural societies. The fertile soil along the riverbanks offered bountiful harvests, fostering the growth of rudimentary villages. China's Neolithic cultures are notable for their independent growth and regional diversity, and for the differences between those in the north and those in the south. For example, in the southeastern part of the country, near Shanghai, a site dated to around 8000 BCE was home to people who cultivated rice, used boats, constructed standing homes, and made pottery with geometric designs. Evidence suggests their language was more closely related to those of the peoples living in Southeast Asia today, so calling them Chinese is open to debate. To the north, the colder climate forced early communities in today's Hebei province to rely on another grain, millet, for their primary foodstuff. These farmers used stone tools such as sickles and made simple jars to store their grain. Wooden spears and hoes were more common in the south than stone tools, and while both north and south domesticated dogs and pigs, in the north grazing animals such as sheep were tamed, while in the south farmers harnessed the power of water buffalo. There were distinctive Neolithic cultures in the east and west of China. From about 4100 to 2600 BCE, the Duenku culture arose near Shandong in the east, characterized by the manufacture of exquisite works of pottery and the use of turquoise, ivory, and jade. The burial practices of the Duenku became more elaborate over time, eventually leading to the use of wooden coffins and the creation of ledges of earth to surround the graves. Later Eastern cultures lavished treasures on the deceased, burying them with necklaces and beads, showing an increasing sophistication in the decorative arts. To the west lay the Yangshou culture, dating to 5000 BCE, whose people farmed millet and dug homes in the earth to protect themselves from a cool climate. In Yangshou, burying the dead was a simpler process, but artists decorated pottery with painted designs and intricate geometric patterns. To the east there are few examples of painted bowls, jars, or cups. Instead, Eastern cultures devoted their creative efforts to the slow, painstaking process of shaping jade. The Hongshan culture in Liaoning province and the Liangzhou complex in Jiangsu fashioned beautiful jade talismans, ornaments, and treasures for spiritual ceremonies. The great distance between these two cultures, with Hongshan far in the northeast near today's border with North Korea and the Liangzhou located around the Yangtze River Delta in the southeast, shows the breadth of jade's influence along China's eastern seaboard. In the west, later networks of exchange connected these regional cultures, which increasingly borrowed from each other, accelerating change, innovation, and collision. From roughly 3000 to 2000 BCE, China's Neolithic cultures created and shared new implements for cooking and artistic styles such as geometric patterns on ceramics. With contact, however, came growing conflict as well, suggested in the archaeological record by the emergence of metalworking and cities defended by walls of rammed earth. The need to coordinate defense and construct such ramparts likely required a political evolution within these cultures, giving rise to an elite military class led by chiefs. Thereafter, Military elites were shrouded in spiritual rituals revolving around human sacrifice, possibly of captives of war, who were entombed beneath buildings in sites found in northern China. Increasing exchange between Neolithic cultures and the prominence of war may also have led to greater social differentiation. Burial sites for elites show evidence of increasingly elaborate ceremonies to please the gods or ancestors and to honor the deceased and denote their status. Women were often buried with the same quantity of items and laid in the same position as their male counterparts. Archaeological remains such as graves, figurines, tools, and other materials suggest that many Neolithic Chinese communities were matrilineal societies, in which lines of kinship were traced through the mother's family. While weaving textiles became an important occupation for many women, the division of labor was far less rigid in this period. Carvings depicting goddesses, symbols of fertility, 
and women's genitalia are prevalent in many of the cultures and seem to suggest women were on a par with men in the Neolithic era, especially when compared with later periods in Chinese history. Agriculture became the cornerstone of these burgeoning societies, leading to surplus food production and allowing for specialization in various crafts. Pottery, a hallmark of this period, emerged as a vital tool for cooking, storage, and trade, revealing the dexterity and creativity of these ancient artisans. As these early civilizations flourished, a quest to communicate and record events spurred the inception of rudimentary writing systems. Pictograms and symbols adorned pottery, bones, and shells, laying the foundation for the evolution of written language. Legend whispers of the Shah dynasty, a period steeped in antiquity, and while historical evidence remains scant, recent archaeological findings offer tantalizing clues to its existence. Discoveries of ancient city walls, ceremonial artifacts, and remnants of sophisticated urban centers hint at the possible reality of this ancient dynasty. The mysterious allure of the Shah dynasty continues to captivate historians and archaeologists, beckoning us to explore further into the annals of China's past. As we navigate through these hallowed grounds, we unearth the foundations upon which one of the world's most remarkable civilizations was built. The Yellow River had an enormous impact on the development of Chinese civilization. It stretches for more than 3,395 miles, beginning in the mountains of western China and emptying into the Bohai Sea from Shandong province. Only the Yangtze River to the south is longer. Critical to the development of farming and human settlement along the Yellow River was the soil, which is lois, a sediment that is highly fertile, but easily moved by winds roaming the plain and driven along as silt by the power of the river. This portability of the soil and the human-built dikes along the river have caused it to constantly evolve and change over the centuries, leaving the surrounding areas prone to regular flooding and subjecting farmers to recurring cycles of bountiful harvests and natural disasters. Rainfall around the Yellow River is limited to around 20 inches annually, meaning that the river's floods have usually been paired with periodic droughts. Near the Yellow River, the site of Erla II in Henan province reveals a culture defined by the building of palaces, the creation of bronze vessels for rituals, and the practice of forms of ancestor worship. Sites such as these have led to debate about whether they prove the existence of the Xia dynasty, a fabled kingdom said to have been founded by one of China's mythological heroes, the Great Yu. No site has yet been found with documents written by the Xia. Instead, all references to it come from records written many centuries after the possible mythical kingdom ceased to exist. The first Chinese dynasty for which we have solid evidence is the Shang. It created a complex, socially stratified Bronze Age civilization whose signature achievement was the creation of a written script. The Shang were long thought to be a mythological dynasty like the Xia until scholars in the late 19th century discovered old turtle shells inscribed with Chinese characters in a medicine shop. Eventually, these shells and other oracle bones, once used in the art of divination, were found to be written records from China's first dynasty. Shang kings exerted their authority through rituals of ancestor worship drawn from the Erla II culture and adapted to the art of bone divination. First carving written characters onto shells and animal bones and then applying heat to crack and shatter them, they posed questions to spirits and divined from the bones the spirits' predictions regarding impending harvests, military campaigns, or the arrival of an heir. From there, the Shang developed a logographic script whose characters visually represented words and ideas, combining symbols to make new concepts and sounds as needed. These characters served in a number of tasks such as keeping records, making calendars and organizing time, and preserving knowledge and communicating it from generation to generation. The earliest forms of Chinese writing were likely forged on fragile materials such as bamboo or even silk and have not survived. But the Shang's passing on to future dynasties a logographic script, rather than a phonographic alphabet, meant that for centuries literacy was the preserve of elites. Reading required memorizing hundreds and eventually thousands of symbols and their meanings, rather than learning the sounds of a far fewer number of letters as is the case with an alphabet. Chinese ideas, values, and spiritual beliefs stored in this logographic script long outlived the Shang becoming a key element of continuity from one dynasty to the next. Through their invention of writing, the Shang were also able to command enormous resources for two centuries. 
They developed the organizational capacity to mine metal ores and transport them to foundries to make bronze cups, goblets, and cauldrons that grew to weigh hundreds of pounds. Shang artisans began weaving silk into cloth, and the city walls around an early capital in Zhengzhou were erected by 10,000 workers moving earth into bulwarks that stood 30 feet high and 60 feet wide. But the Shang became China's first dynasty largely because of their military prowess, expanding their power through conquest, unlike the earlier and more trade-oriented cultures. Through warfare and the construction of a network of walled towns, the Shang built one of the world's first large territorial states controlled by a noble warrior class. This area included territory in Henan, Anhui, Shandong, Hebei, and Shaanxi provinces. The Shang used bronze spears, bows, and later horse-drawn chariots to make raids against neighboring cultures, distributing the prizes to vassals and making enemies into allies for a share of the plunder. The prizes included captives of war, enslaved by the Shang warrior elite or sacrificed. An aristocratic and militaristic culture, the Shang also organized royal hunts for game such as deer, bear, and even tigers and elephants to hone their skills. The oracle bones suggest that religion and ritual were the backbone of Shang society. The kings were not just military leaders but high priests who worshipped their ancestors and the supreme deity known as Di. Shang queens and princesses were also active in politics and warfare, with a few notable women such as the general Fu Hao leading large armies onto the battlefield. Aristocratic women also regularly served as priests in the royal ancestral cult. Like many other ancient societies, the Shang dynasty exhibited a theocratic dimension, with the kings claiming the exclusive right to act as intermediaries between their subjects and the spirit world. To stage this royal role, the Shang built palaces, temples, and altars for worship in their capital cities, served by artisans making a host of goods. They developed enormous tombs tunneled beneath the earth for royals and nobility, signifying their capacity to organize labor and resources on a vast scale. Fu Hao's tomb, for example, was small by comparison to many others for Shang royals, but it was dug 25 feet deep into the earth and was large enough to hold 16 human sacrifices and hundreds of bronze weapons, mirrors, bells, and other items fashioned from bone, jade, ivory, and stone. A comparison of early Shang tombs in Zhengzhou with those of a later period discovered in Anyang suggests that human sacrifices became ever more spiritually significant, and also more extreme. Later kings were found buried not with a few victims but with hundreds of servants and prisoners of war, as well as animals such as dogs and horses. By spilling human blood, Shang royalty hoped to appease Di and their ancestors to ward off problems such as famine. But the scale of these rituals ballooned, with one record indicating that King Wu Ding went so far as to sacrifice more than 9,000 victims in one ritual bloodletting. Under the sway of the Shang, the disparate Neolithic cultures of northern China grew more uniform, while even groups beyond the Shang's control in the Yangtze River Valley and the West were influenced by their artistic styles and motifs. Yet over the course of their reign, the Shang's reliance on constant warfare and a religion centered on human sacrifices bred discontent and may have fueled the perception of their kings as corrupt and sadistic. It might even have precipitated revolt against the Shang rulers and the culture's eventual demise. The ascendancy of the Shang dynasty marked the earliest recorded era in Chinese history. With written records emerging, they offered a glimpse into a structured society governed by a powerful monarchy, establishing the roots of China's imperial tradition. An invaluable contribution of the Shang dynasty was the invention of oracle bone script, an early form of writing. These script inscriptions, etched onto bones and shells, not only served as records of divinations and court proceedings but also provided a remarkable insight into the beliefs, language, and daily life of this era. The Shang dynasty maintained a structured social system with the king at the apex, revered as a divine intermediary between the mortal realm and the spiritual world. The ruling elite, comprising nobles and priests, held significant power, while artisans, farmers, and laborers played integral roles in society's functioning. Technological ingenuity thrived during the Shang era. The mastery of bronze casting ushered in an era of sophisticated weaponry, ceremonial vessels, and ornate artifacts, showcasing the craftsmanship and technical prowess of the time. Advanced pottery techniques and silk production further exemplified the dynasty's creative and industrial accomplishments. 
The Shang people held a profound reverence for their ancestors, believing in the continuity of life beyond death. Through elaborate divination rituals utilizing oracle bones, the Shang sought guidance from the spirit world, posing questions about events, offerings, and the future. The cracks on heated oracle bones were interpreted as divine messages, providing insights that guided their decisions and actions. The fall of the Shang dynasty marked the ascent of a new epoch in China's history, the era of the Zhou dynasty. This transformative period introduced an enduring concept that shaped the political and philosophical landscape of ancient China. Central to the Zhou dynasty's rule was the profound doctrine known as the Mandate of Heaven. This concept asserted that a ruler's right to govern was not absolute but contingent upon moral virtue and the celestial approval of the heavens. It became a fundamental principle that justified dynastic transitions and provided a moral framework for governance. Under the Zhou dynasty, China embraced a feudal system where power was decentralized. Feudal lords, known as nobles, were granted territories and autonomy in exchange for their allegiance to the central authority. This intricate network of vassal states, while fostering stability, also sowed the seeds of regional autonomy and conflicts that would shape China's future. At the heart of Chinese philosophy stood the Book of Changes, or I Ching, a foundational text that elucidated the principles of change, balance, and harmony. This revered text not only served as a manual for divination but also offered philosophical insights and wisdom, guiding individuals and rulers in decision-making and governance. The Zhou dynasty unfolded in two distinctive epochs, the Western and Eastern Zhou. The Western Zhou marked an era of prosperity, cultural advancement, and the crystallization of Confucianism and Taoism. Meanwhile, the Eastern Zhou saw a tumultuous period, witnessing the emergence of schools of thought, the hundred schools of thought, and intellectual ferment that laid the groundwork for China's philosophical heritage. The Warring States period was an era of strife and turbulence, where the once unified China splintered into several independent states, each vying for supremacy. This epoch marked a time of unparalleled chaos and political upheaval. Amidst the turmoil emerged towering intellectual figures whose philosophies would shape the very essence of Chinese civilization. Confucius, with his emphasis on ethics, social harmony, and virtue. Laozi, the progenitor of Taoism, advocating for natural simplicity and harmony, and Sun Tzu, the master strategist, author of The Art of War, expounding principles of military strategy and tactics. Amidst the intellectual ferment, legalism emerged as a doctrine advocating strict laws, centralized authority, and stringent control. Propounded by philosophers such as Han Fei and Li Si, legalism promoted a doctrine of harsh punishments and strong central governance to maintain order and authority in a fragmented and tumultuous time. Amidst the chaos, a visionary emerged in the form of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qin dynasty. His ambition and tactical brilliance drove the conquest of the warring states, unifying China under a single rule. His reign heralded a monumental shift, consolidating power and laying the foundation for an imperial system that would shape the future of China. The ambition of Qin Shi Huang's rule was not only in unification but also in monumental projects such as the construction of the Great Wall of China, fortifications, and a standardized administrative system. Despite controversies and authoritarian measures, his reign left an indelible mark on the course of Chinese history. The Han Dynasty stands as an illustrious chapter in Chinese history, celebrated for its profound contributions to governance, culture, and technological innovation. Under its reign, China experienced an era of unparalleled growth and influence. The Han Dynasty heralded a pivotal shift in governance by implementing a merit-based bureaucracy. This civil service system, founded on merit and education, allowed individuals to advance based on their abilities rather than aristocratic lineage, fostering an efficient and competent administrative structure. The Han Dynasty facilitated cultural exchange and trade through the Silk Road, a network of trade routes spanning thousands of miles. This corridor of commerce linked the East and West, fostering the exchange of goods, ideas, religions, and technologies between diverse civilizations. One of the Han Dynasty's most revolutionary contributions to the world was the invention of paper. This development in papermaking technology revolutionized the dissemination of knowledge, facilitating the creation of written records, literature, and communication that would profoundly impact human civilization. 
The Han Dynasty continued the construction of the Great Wall, fortifying and expanding this monumental structure. Intended as a defensive barrier against invasions from northern nomadic tribes, the Great Wall stands as a testament to the dynasty's commitment to protecting its borders. However, the glory of the Han Dynasty was not eternal. Internal strife, corruption, and external pressures led to its decline, giving rise to a period of division known as the Three Kingdoms. This era saw intense power struggles, marked by the ambitions of rival warlords seeking to unify a fractured land. The Tang Dynasty, often revered as a pinnacle of cultural and economic prosperity, marked a golden epoch in Chinese history. Its reign witnessed a profound expansion and remarkable artistic and intellectual flourishing that left an indelible mark on China's history. The Tang Dynasty formalized the Chinese examination system, elevating the importance of education and meritocracy. This system, based on Confucian principles, aimed to select and appoint government officials based on their knowledge, virtue, and competence, rather than noble lineage, laying the foundation for a professional bureaucracy. The Tang Dynasty fostered a harmonious coexistence of Confucianism and Buddhism, as these philosophies deeply influenced societal values, ethical norms, and artistic expressions. Confucianism's emphasis on social order and governance coalesced with the spiritual and meditative practices of Buddhism, permeating various aspects of life and culture. The Song Dynasty's legacy echoed the spirit of innovation and artistic excellence. It marked an era of significant achievements in science, art, and trade. Technological advancements in agriculture, printing, and maritime navigation catalyzed an era of unprecedented progress and prosperity. The Song Dynasty's economic prowess extended beyond its borders, fostering extensive trade networks along the Grand Canal and the Maritime Silk Road. The exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures contributed to a cosmopolitan society and propelled China to the forefront of global commerce. Artistic and cultural expressions thrived during the Song Dynasty, exemplified by advancements in painting, calligraphy, poetry, and porcelain. Artists and poets of the time created masterpieces that embodied grace, refinement, and exquisite beauty, establishing the dynasty's enduring cultural legacy. The Mongol Empire, under the leadership of Kublai Khan, forged an empire that stretched across vast expanses, conquering territories and establishing the Yuan dynasty in China. The Mongol rule marked a transformative era that reshaped the fabric of Chinese society and governance. Mongol rule in China heralded a period of cultural intermingling and exchange. Though initially seen as foreign conquerors, the Mongols assimilated Chinese administrative systems and customs, fostering cultural pluralism. Their policies promoted religious tolerance and trade, paving the way for new economic prospects and global connections. Marco Polo's journey through Yuan China captured the grandeur and sophistication of Kublai Khan's court. His chronicles unveiled tales of the empire's opulence, advanced infrastructure, and rich cultural tapestry, leaving a lasting imprint on Western perceptions of the East. The Yuan dynasty faced internal strife, economic challenges, and widespread discontent, leading to its downfall. Amidst the chaos and rebellions, the Ming Dynasty emerged, founded by Zhu Yanzhong, signaling the end of Mongol rule in China and the advent of a new era. The Mongol Empire's influence extended far beyond their rule, leaving an indelible mark on China's history. Their interactions, governance, and exchanges reshaped China's identity, fostering a legacy that persisted long after their empire's decline. The Ming Dynasty emerged as a beacon of revival, reclaiming China's sovereignty after the collapse of the Mongol-led Yuan Dynasty. Their ascension marked a significant resurgence of Chinese civilization, revitalizing culture, art, and governance. Admiral Zheng He, a remarkable navigator, led a series of grand expeditions during the early Ming Dynasty. His voyages stretched across the Indian Ocean and beyond, displaying China's naval power and engaging in extensive trade, diplomacy, and cultural exchanges with distant lands. Despite its earlier glories, the Ming Dynasty faced internal discord, economic challenges, and external threats, contributing to its decline. This period witnessed peasant uprisings, corruption, and the invasion of the Manchu forces, leading to the downfall of the Ming Dynasty. The fall of the Ming Dynasty paved the way for the rise of the Qing Dynasty, founded by the Manchu people. 
The Qing dynasty marked a period of cultural amalgamation, incorporating diverse traditions and establishing a multi-ethnic empire that lasted for centuries. The Qing dynasty, founded by the Manchu people, marked a transformative period in Chinese history. The Manchus, with their distinctive heritage, established an empire that blended various ethnicities and cultural traditions, paving the way for a diverse and multicultural Qing empire. The Opium Wars, ignited by the British desire to redress trade imbalances, exposed the vulnerabilities of the Qing dynasty. These conflicts resulted in a series of unequal treaties, territorial concessions, and economic exploitation, which critically undermined Qing authority. The Boxer Rebellion emerged as a reactionary movement against foreign influence and Christian missionary activities in China. The Qing government's involvement in this uprising led to further conflicts with foreign powers, culminating in military interventions and additional territorial and economic concessions. As the Qing dynasty grappled with internal discord, economic difficulties, and foreign pressures, it found itself in a state of decline. The discontent of the people, political turmoil, and the invasion of foreign forces further eroded Qing rule. The decline of the Qing dynasty paved the way for a revolutionary era in China. Visionaries like Sun Yat-sen and reformists such as Yuan Shikai played pivotal roles in the establishment of the Republic of China, marking the end of imperial rule and the dawning of a new chapter in Chinese history. The Qing dynasty's expansion, the tumultuous Opium Wars, the Boxer Rebellion, and the eventual establishment of the Republic of China collectively signify a momentous transformation in China's history. These transitions bear witness to the resilience and adaptability of a civilization that continues to shape the world. Ancient China stands as a testament to the depth of human civilization, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to shape not only the nation itself but reverberates throughout the world. Its profound historical roots, the unwavering connection of modern China to its past, the enduring influence of Chinese culture, philosophy, and innovations, and the nation's anticipated future impact on the global stage define the saga of this remarkable civilization. The legacy of ancient China is one of unparalleled significance. From its pioneering achievements in science, technology, governance, and philosophy to its artistic prowess and cultural depth, China's heritage has laid the foundation for numerous aspects of human civilization. Its dynastic cycles, Philosophical insights and technological innovations have left an indelible mark on the world, influencing thought, arts, governance, and daily life. The trajectory of China's future is poised to hold substantial sway in shaping the global landscape. Its economic growth, technological advancements, and strategic initiatives position China as a key player in global affairs. The Belt and Road Initiative, Space exploration missions and commitments to sustainability signal a future where China's influence will extend far beyond its borders. As China continues to embrace innovation, education, and global partnerships, its presence on the global stage will likely continue to expand. The nation's cultural depth, technological prowess, and economic initiatives forecast a future where China's impact will resonate across various spheres, contributing to a more interconnected and collaborative global community. As we draw the curtains on this captivating journey through the annals of ancient China, it's essential to express gratitude to all who have joined us in exploring this remarkable historical odyssey. Your participation and interest in unraveling the tales of this extraordinary civilization have been truly invaluable. Before we part ways, if you've relished this journey and found it insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to further immerse yourself in the myriad of historical sagas and knowledge from around the world.